happy Christmas to you today. I do want to welcome you to this online service for Donaghadee Methodist Church. It's a very strange uh, time. We planned to meet in, in person this morning, uh, but we've had to change our plans because of the, the additional concerns that we have about the pandemic that's going on around us. So I do welcome you wherever you are uh, watching this service. If, it, it, in, if you're a member of Donaghadee Methodist Church, or if you're not, or if you're someplace else in the world, you're very welcome this morning as, you, as we join together for worship on this Christmas day. I want to begin with this uh, verse from John chapter 1. Uh, the, uh, we'll be hearing more of this chapter at the, in a few minutes time, but I just want to begin with this, this one verse. And the word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. And now we're going to hear our opening hymn, which is, O Come All Ye Faithful. to us as a baby, born to poor parents, cradled in a manger, housed in a barn in that little village of Bethlehem. We marvel at all that happened so long ago, changing the course of human history 
dividing time into B.C. and A.D., beginning a faith that covers the earth, inspiring books and art and thoughts, changing the lives of countless people. Lord, change the course of our lives as we think today about that birth that tells us we are unconditionally loved, that calls us to see power in weakness, that causes us to see that you loved us enough to become one of us, that makes us know your power by which you save us when we cannot save ourselves. We pray for faith to see you today. We pray for all those who are affected by the pandemic that is surrounding the earth. We pay, pray for poverty-stricken nations of the world and the poor people, for the powerless who cannot help themselves, for the small and unimpressive, for those who've been excluded from privilege. We pray for the grace to love you by loving the weak, by feeding the hungry, by sheltering the homeless, by guiding the young. We pray for hope to shine through us because you've come to be the light, because you are the way, because you are the truth, because in you we have life. We pray this in your name. Amen. And now our scripture reading will be John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18, and it will be a, a recording uh, read by Kristen Getty. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. And in him was life. And that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. But the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, Full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. He is at the Father's side, has made him known.
quite what I expected when I was planning this service. I was expecting to have at least some people in the congregation with masks on that I could speak to and ask questions to when I'm doing this. So I've, I've recruited my lovely wife, Elizabeth, to be the, uh, the congregation for me today. So if you hear a voice in the background, you know that it's hers, that I, I'm going to ask her the questions, and you can ask, answer along as we're doing this. So I, I just wanted to talk about this, and think about the, the, the verse that we just heard. But first, I want to ask a basic question. What do you do when it's dark in your house? Anybody in the congregation want to tell me? <laughs> Turn the lights on. Turn the lights on. Yes, thank you very much. You got it just right. And what makes lights work? Electricity. Electricity, yes. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. You're doing very well. I see other <laughs> questions for me. When it's especially scary, uh, 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 it, when is it especially scary in the dark? Well, let me think about, mention a few reasons. One is, one time can be when you're coming home to a dark house at night. The house is completely dark when you get there. That can be scary, can't it? Or another was when you wake up at night and you're, you're feeling, not feeling well. You just wake up and you're feeling ill. And, and, and so that can, be, that can be scary too. Or it can also be scary on the days when there's a big storm, one of these named storms that we get nowadays, and it knocks the power off. And so there's no power in your house that's dark. It can be scary in the dark. But what can we do to prepare for these scary times, to be ready for them? Well, one thing we can do is to leave a light on when we're, uh, so, so it'll be bright when we're coming home, if we leave a little light on somewhere. Another is we could have a night light, if, so if we wake up in the night, so we'll be able to not, uh, not have the darkness when we wake up at night. Or uh, the other is to have a, a, a torch ready, or candles, or, or a hurricane lamp, or even the, the, the the torch on your phone, uh, when the power goes off. So you're ready when the power goes off. So what do the towns and cities have to help us see at night? Anybody? Street lights. Street lights, yes, thank you very much. You're doing very well. Uh, and it, have you ever walked down the street when it's, there's no lights, uh, when the lights are gone out, something's caused the street lights to go out? Uh, yeah, yes, mm -hmm. yes, I see nods in the, the congregation. Uh, yes, it gives you a very uneasy feeling, doesn't it, when that happens? Well, what happens at, at some houses when, when people walk up to the houses? When people, it's dark, and people start walking up to the houses, what happens sometimes? Security lights go on. Security lights go on, yes, thank you. The, the, light, the, the security lights go on. The floodlights will come on <laughs> automatically. They have kind of electric eyes, so they'll come on automatically. And people uh, who live there feel more secure because they, they know that they're not going to be arriving home in the dark and they know if the strangers come that they'll be able to see that they, they, they've, they've come. So how do we associate the Christmas season with lights? Well, think of various things. There's the lights of the trees like we have here on our lovely Christmas tree that my lovely wife Elizabeth has decorated for us. Or there's the lights that there are in shops and all those along the streets. We have all those lights. There's the candlelight services in, in churches. We normally have one of those in, uh, for our, our candlelight carol service in Donegan. We weren't able to have that this year either because of the pandemic. Just one of those things that's happened. And we have Christmas lights. I mean, do you know that the verse that, uh, read, that we heard Kristen Getty reading today from John 1 is symbolized in Christmas lights? John 1 verse 4 says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. In him was life and light. What does life mean? Well, it's, life is, is more than just existing. As it means it, it, here when it's talking about it. We know that lots of things exist. They don't have life. Rocks exist. They don't have life. It's not even talking about the kind of life there is when, with trees, that trees exist. But, and they have life, but not the life that it's talking about in John 1, verse 4. Life here is talking about the life that we get from God. And the way we get it is through trusting in his Son, Jesus Christ, whose coming we celebrate at Christmas. And then what does... Light means, and that was what life means in this verse. What does life mean? What does light mean? 
But light here refers to the battle against evil, the battle against darkness. With Jesus, God won the victory over evil. God won the victory over the powers of darkness. Christmas lights symbolize the coming of Christ into the world to offer us life and light. So today on this Christmas day, at this Christmas service, and as we are socially distanced from each other and, and, and just being able to join together this way over the, the internet, let us remember that Jesus came to offer us life and light. And we receive light and life when we come to Jesus and let him come into our lives through faith. Let us pray. Oh God, our Father, help us realize the true meaning of Christmas. 
May we share the light and life of Jesus with those in need. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the life and light of the world. Amen. We now have our final hymn, which is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always amen go forth in joy and peace